Warning, this highly educational video does contain some scenes that shows the graphic cruelty of nature. If you are the sort of viewer who gets easily triggered with the way nature plays, this video's not for you. On the morning walk, uh, I found this and it's a little bit distressing, but it's the fate of many cicadas. I could only assume that this black cicada here is strange. It's the first black one that I've seen uh, this season has been attacked by a bird. It's missing wings on one side. It's heavily damaged. The front of the cicada is also heavily damaged. It is only clinging onto life by a little tiny bit. Uh, but sadly, uh, I see this all too often. Birds are a major predator of cicadas. And what I'll do is I'll pick up this poor little uh, chap. Or is it a boy or a girl? It's a, it's a boy. Okay. And uh, I'll put it over in the garden and then the ants can have a go. I think that's the uh, nicest thing to do. Someone's front garden there. Good night, sister. Uh, it's that time of year, that time of year. That's, oh, it's a male making a sound there. Oh, nice feisty one as well. Look at that. You will be in danger if you stay there because the birds can see them on the fence and uh, pick them off really fast. Noisy and friendly. I remember if, I, if you tickle the back, you can get them to make a noise. Quite a loud sound, ear piercing would be the best way of describing it. I'll let this one go, it's very eager to um, get up into the trees. Okay, ready to fly, get the flight wings going and fly. Oh, okay, making it across the road there. Oh yeah, there it goes there, still, wow, it's still going and I think it's made of the safety in the palm tree over there. If you're a cicada, normally you're with your brood of friends that have all popped up about the same time. To see the green cicadas in the part of town where I live is a little bit unusual. Normally we see black, red-eyed cicadas and it was a couple of years back and I can't exactly remember the year, but there was a mass of them right here. Yeah, they're certainly crazy when you get a number of them together. The more I add, the crazier it becomes. Um, I'm not surprised to not see them this year because the next time that brood of cicadas appears, I think it's 2020. I hope I'm right there. Down on the fence there back then was all of the cicada casings that they come out of, the nymph casings. And then I think it was that tree there was like the, the dominant tree where the whole brood had developed from. And while I'm thinking about cicadas, this is a fairly rare find. Well, I classify it as rare. And it looks like uh, I can see two cicadas there. It's the nymphs. It looks like they're starting to come up out of ground. I'm not sure what condition they're in. Now, what I'm worried about here is... There's actually an ant colony here, okay, so there's the ant eggs there and the ants. There's another nymph there, just near the surface. And what's happened here is, uh, there was one of Mummy's pots here, a square one, ceramic one. It looks like the cicadas have come up to emerge, but they've come up against the pot. So, <laughs> I might relocate these two uh, to somewhere where they can uh, escape at their own will. It's a little bit like playing God because uh, I'm pretty sure the ants would take advantage of this uh, because when they're in nymph mode, uh, they're quite susceptible to ant attack. Okay, come on little fella. Oh, look at that. That's what they look like uh, before they come out of their wondrous shell, hey? Been underground for many, many years. Come on, I'll save you. Come on. And there's one just here. Who knows, they might have been uh, coming up for tonight, if that makes any sense. Okay, just very gently dig underneath here. Wow. Okay, I'm going to get you away from the ant colony, and I'm sure you're going to be a lot better off. See the ants all over that? Yeah. Distressing in a way, but we'll save these guys, don't you worry. Well, there you go. Uh, what's the saying? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well, what are two cicada nymphs worth? I really have not found them like this uh, just underground. Oh, it looks like they're having a battle. I better get you guys somewhere safe and away from the ants and somewhere where you can decide uh, when to go up a tree and I'll find a tree uh, for these little guys to, uh, to climb up. That's uh, really important, eh? I'm just showing my son these uh, cicadas which are still in their shell. What do you think of that? Uh, it's actually kind of cool. 
I think it's very cool because, uh, well, I haven't seen it that often, so I'm guessing that you haven't seen it that often. Have you ever seen that before? No. Only in this one video, like this Cookie Monster video. A Cookie Monster? Well, yeah, but they were coming out. That's right. You remember that, do you? Yeah, I still remember that. Like, the cicadas come out of the shell. Shell, yeah. Ah, uh, but these guys haven't crawled up out of the ground yet. I sort of saved them from uh, annihilation of the ant colony and mummy's pots. Now, the other thing about these two little guys before I let them go, the tree that they would have been born on and dropped out of the ground, well, sadly, and this is the problem for cicadas, that tree used to be there. It used to be a great big gum tree. Uh, we had to get it taken away because it was a bit dangerous. And at this point here, like a couple of years back, I would have been looking up into a tree, but hey, sadly, it's gone. Okay, I've looked around. The two cicadas, uh, they're getting very friendly already. It's a little bit early, guys, a little bit early. Uh, I can see a cicada hole here under a tree that I've got in the front yard, and I'll dig up the area here, and I'll put these little guys and girls, I hope, underneath here, so they can decide when they want to crawl out and then go up onto the tree, which is right here. I'm doing my best here. I'm going to have them right next to the tree, okay? So if they're silly, they'll go this direction. If they're smart, they'll go up here. Okay, the dynamic duo of cicada awesomeness. I'll put them in separate spots here uh, because I do think they like to be separated away. I'll just get the other one and I'll put this other one right here. Just facing the right direction, I hope. And I'll come along, I'll just very, very gently cover this up. I've never done a cicada rescue before like this. I'm pretty sure they were going to get stuck under mummy's tub there. I shouldn't say tub, it was like a ceramic thing. And uh, the ants were going to take them out. Okay, I'll just get my son to come in and finish this off. Okay, come in and give that area a nice spray. Get up closer. And make it nice and damp for them. That's it. Uh, we just want to have it damp enough, but not a flood. If that makes any sense. We haven't had much rain, so uh, I think that'll do it. Okay, the ground is wet. The cicadas have been relocated. They're right up next to a tree. When they come out, they've only got a couple of weeks of life left. So let's hope they get onto the tree and enjoy their final weeks of life. That's the ceramic garden bed that those nymph cicadas were underneath. I don't think they're gonna get past that, although I do notice here, there is a cicada shell there. That's one which has got out and become a cicada. That's just empty. And what I did do, and I'll have to put mummy's uh, thingo back again, is I've just dug around here and I thought there might've been another nymph or something just under the surface. Got a sneaky suspicion that's what they do just before they emerge. Who knows where they go for all those many, many years that you never see them. Okay, that's one of the great cicada mysteries and I don't think there's any more nymphs here. Uh, but I'm well aware that the tree that these guys would have been born into, uh, well, sadly, that's gone. Cicadas, unusual things, strange life cycles. And when I studied them up at my local school, when there was like a, a mass of them on one tree, I thought to myself, why have they picked off one tree versus the many, many trees that were about? Uh, I thought to myself, wow, I could come back to this tree in seven years' time and I know where the cicadas are going to come out of the ground because I saw them breeding on this tree, I saw them feeding on the tree, I saw them doing everything cicadas do in their final weeks of life on this tree. So if the school was smart, they could say to the kindy children, by the time you're in year six, which is seven years later, this tree here is going to have a mass of cicadas appear out of the ground. That would be highly educational. And unless we're educational, Mr. YouTube no longer loves me. I know, I know, many people will ask what happened with those rescue cicadas that you relocated? Did they come up that night and hatch out of the ground? Well, I'm looking at the area where I put them in, next to the tree. I can see the hole, uh, the hole up there from the original cicada hole, which is still there. But I can't see uh, two other holes or anywhere where these little critters have come up out of ground. One thing that I did see here yesterday afternoon and also this morning is the ant colony which sort of reside in our front fence are still doing their secret ant business. In my mind there's a bit of mystery into what triggers a cicada to come up and start that end of life sequence as a beautiful wing cicada. Maybe some of the audience will know but what I have noticed and it's a kumquat tree that I put the cicadas under there's some really wacky uh, spider nest here and I don't know if I want to get that close to it. The spiders made um, like a nest in there with a whole bunch of dead leaves 
and there's like a secret entry in there. Ooh, it looks a bit scary, doesn't it? Has me thinking what sort of spider makes a nest like that with old bark and leaves and resides up inside a tree. Strange sort of messy web and I know there'll be some Captain Obvious on YouTube and they'll say, oh but Leo it's called a tree spider, don't you know? Well I don't know and that's why I'm a bit curious about it. Um, spooky, I don't really see things like that too often in trees.